Hi, I'm Dr. Monica Goel. I am a consultant physician in DDNB internal medicine associated with the PD Hinducha Hospital. Uh, today I'm going to talk about vaccines and this is about vaccination in adults. It is a common myth amongst many that only children require vaccination, whereas the truth is that adults also require a certain dosage and schedule of vaccines and that is what I'm going to talk about today. Talking about adult vaccines, there are certain like influenza, varicella, pneumococcal, against hepatitis A and B, meningococcal, MMR, against human papilloma virus, typhoid vaccine, to name a few. We'll start with the influenza vaccine. This vaccine is basically administered amongst adults on a yearly basis. That is because the antigen varies every year. Now, who are the people who receive this vaccine? These are primary healthcare givers. People who are associated with giving health to infants less than six months of age are at higher risk of contracting influenza. People at the age of 50 or above, especially those with underlying medical conditions like a chronic kidney disease, liver disease, a chronic lung disease. There is a recombinant influenza vaccine available which is recommended for people in the age group of 18 to 49. The next important vaccine that I wish to share with you is the varicella vaccine. Now, anybody who's had chickenpox, the vaccine remains dormant for life. But in 15% of people, this vaccine gets reactivated, causing shingles, which is a very painful medical condition, causing painful blisters on one side of the body. These people can have neuralgia for years altogether after having this illness. So, varicella is recommended for people above the age of 60 years, those who do not have a weak immune system. So anybody above the age of 13 who's not had chickenpox before and who's had been in close contact with a person who's had chickenpox needs to receive varicella in two doses which are spaced 28 days apart. Pregnant women receive varicella on the completion of pregnancy and the second dose is administered at 4 to 8 weeks after the first. Measles, mumps and rubella is a name which may be familiar to many. This vaccine is also recommended as a 0.5 ml subcutaneous that is given relief beneath the skin in 1 to 2 doses spaced at 4 to 8 weeks apart. This is mostly given for students, people who travel frequently and people who are above the age group of 56 years. Another very important vaccine for adults is the pneumococcal vaccine. Pneumococcal vaccine is available in two strains in the market, Prevenar 13 and 23. Prevenar 13 is recommended for adults more than 19 years of age, especially those with underlying medical conditions like a chronic lung disease, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, patients having asthma, smokers, chronic kidney disease, diabetics. And the 23 strain is recommended for people above the age of 65 also, provided they haven't been vaccinated earlier or the last vaccine they received was 5 years back. Pneumococcal vaccine is once a lifetime vaccine. Generally, the dose need not be repeated. Meningococcal vaccine needs mention too because it is necessary for healthcare workers, people with a weak immune system with human deficiency immunovirus infections and asplenic patients. It is also administered in one or more doses. Hip B vaccine, which is against Haemophilus influenzae, is again given for healthcare workers, people with chronic alcoholism, chronic liver disease, and a functional or anatomic asplenia. After having mentioned all these, I wish to mention a very important vaccine available against the human papilloma virus. As some of us must be aware, HPV causes genital warts, cervical cancers, vaginal, vulvar, and oral cancers. HPV is given in three doses, given intramuscularly. These doses are spaced at 0, 2, and 6 months. There are two vaccines available, that is Cervarix and Gardasil. Cervarix protects against the strains 16 and 18 of HPV, therefore, it gives protection against cervical cancers, but not against genital warts. Whereas Gardasil protects against strains 6 and 11, therefore offering additional protection against genital warts. I'm sure most of us are aware of hepatitis, you know, which causes liver disorders. So there's hepatitis A and B vaccine, which is available. A is given in one to two doses, especially for food handlers, people who travel frequently, and also people with underlying liver disorders. Hepatitis B is a very important vaccine if given timely, can prevent the onset of hepatocellular necrosis, which eventually 
can lead to hepatocellular carcinoma if there is super infection with HDB. Hepatitis B is again given in three doses at intervals of 0, 1 to 2 months and 4 to 6 months. Who are the people who receive hepatitis B? Are healthcare workers, medical professionals, doctors, paramedics, sex workers and people who are sexually active and who are in a polygamous relationship, HIV or other people with underlying disorders. There is another vaccine which is a combination of hepatitis A and B that is Twindrix. In this vaccine, the dose of hepatitis A is reduced. Therefore, it can be given at a convenient three-dose schedule. TDAP, that is tetanus, diphtheria and acellular proteosis, needs a special mention because adults have a waxing immunity of tetanus and diphtheria over 10 years. Therefore, they need a booster every 10 years. In pregnancy earlier, we used to give only tetanus toxoid, but the latest recommendation is to replace tetanus with TDAP in all the three doses of this vaccine given in pregnancy. Typhoid is another vaccine which comes to the mind of many. It's available in two forms. One is an oral vaccine, 21A, given to people older than six years with a booster every five years. And there is a VI polysaccharide, which is a subunit vaccine injectable, given to people older than two years of age and are boosted every three years. Who are the people who receive typhoid are frequent travelers who go to places which are endemic with typhoid and to people who have had contact with a person who is a carrier for typhoid. Another vaccine H1N1, we've heard of swine flu. This vaccine is available as a nasal vaccine, especially in the US, again for medical and paramedical people. So to sum it up, basically any adult who's not received the varicella, hepatitis A, B or HPV vaccine or even NMR as a child should receive this vaccine as an adult. As a healthcare giver or a doctor, it becomes our duty to educate our patients about these vaccines, their schedules, looking at the patient profile, their age, job, travel involved, underlying medical condition, explaining the benefits and risks which are, to my mind, very few to name, like maybe local pain, tenderness, swelling at the site of injection, very few systemic reactions like fever, myalgias, or headaches. So we need to educate our patient and give them the right vaccine at the right time.